Peace, and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm your host, Clarity. Now, there is so much misinformation out there about black history, especially when it comes to slavery and Jim Crow. Now, you leave it to Hollywood, and they'll make you think that Harriet Tubman was the only one who ever got free, and that Nat Turner is the only one who ever fought back. Nothing could be farther from the truth. See, the fact is, Africans constantly rebelled against their enslavement for the entire time slavery existed. Many of those rebellious Africans escaped to freedom in other countries, but some remained right here in the United States and started their own free black towns. In America, they will call them fugitives or runaways. Around the world, these self-liberated Africans were known as the Maroons. Now, who exactly are the Maroons? How were they able to free themselves from captivity? And what can African Americans learn today from our Maroon ancestors in North America and around the world? We'll answer these questions and many, many more right now on The Breakdown. The Breakdown. There is a disconnect in America when it comes to black history. It is a disconnect between the reality of this history and the distorted impression many young people have today. In recent years, memes and t-shirts have appeared saying, I'm not my ancestors, I'll put my hands on you. Or, I'm not my ancestors, I don't turn the other cheek. All in response to a common misnomer about the ways in which oppressed black people in America responded to their condition in the past. Because of the often limited ways in which the history of slavery and civil rights is taught in Western school systems, many young people have come away with the impression that African-American ancestors were docile victims, too afraid to stand up for themselves and fight for their right to live. They believe that except for the occasional demonstration or revolt, all their ancestors mostly did was keep their heads low, cried, sung, and prayed for freedom. But even a brief examination of the full history of slavery and Jim Crow in the U.S. will prove that the opposite is true. Africans sustained a relentless and formidable fight against slavery from the very beginning and continued to do so for hundreds of years. In many cases, enslaved Africans in North America successfully liberated themselves by the dozens and even by the hundreds through armed resistance and escape. They went north to Canada, south to Mexico, and overseas to the Caribbean. Others escaped and remained right here in the United States, joining forces with Native American tribes or starting their own free black towns, which they defended for generations. We call these self-liberated Africans the Maroons. There was resistance from minute one. In fact, resistance in terms of being forced to get on the slave ships in the first place. As early as the 1520s, the Spanish had brought enslaved Africans to the territory north of today's Florida. The Maroons were self-liberated Africans who were able to escape from the jurisdiction of the Spanish and set up their own communities, or in some cases, the Africans defected to the indigenous side, chased the Spanish back to the Caribbean. The presence of Maroons was not limited to the United States and can be found all over the Western Hemisphere. Just about anywhere in history enslaved Africans are found, you'll also find Africans who fought back against their enslavers and won. Perhaps the most profound episode in the history of African people, including African people in North America, is the Haitian Revolution, 1791 to 1804, when the enslaved rose up as one in one of the most important revolts in the history of the world. And that is a story that we all need to study and learn. Now, with regard to other examples, I would point to Palmares in Brazil. It's probably one of the most successful so-called maroon settlements in the history of the Americas. They escaped the jurisdiction of the slave owners, set up their own community, which lasts for about 100 years. In fact, 
Africans successfully fought back against enslavement so often that the European investors in the slave trade started taking out insurance policies to protect their financial stake in the case of a rebellion or the loss of a slave ship. As it was not uncommon for Africans to overpower the European slave traders and give them a taste of their own medicine. There were instances of the enslaved, or the potentially enslaved, I should say, taking over the ships and sailing the ships back to Africa with the would be enslavers becoming captives. So I'm not sure where this mythology about not rebelling came from. Although many Africans were successful fighting back and evading capture, it goes without saying that many more were unable to avoid the brutal voyage through the Middle Passage. But the human spirit and desire for freedom is strong. And even after arriving on the shores of North America, the African fighting spirit remained and endured. So much so that Africans continued to resist and rebel, some finding allies among local indigenous Americans, while others sought refuge in terrain too hostile for slave catchers to risk the pursuit. Well, Florida is probably site number one, not least because of solidarity from the indigenous populations. In fact, there was an, a de facto merger. And then, of course, there's the Dismal Swamp area, when Nat Turner, the great slave rebel of the 1830s, rose up with his comrades in one of the bloodiest revolts of the enslaved in the history of the United States, they were trying, apparently, to seek sanctuary in the Dismal Swamp area. The terrain is difficult to navigate. Think of Florida, where you still have a substantial population of alligators. So this all helps to guarantee that these areas would be sanctuaries for fleeing Africans. If the rough terrain of the southeastern swamplands were sanctuaries for fleeing Africans, it could be equally said that the Negro Fort in northern Florida was a sanctuary for fighting Africans. There have been books written about the Negro Fort, uh, which is probably the most significant armed encampment of Africans in the history of the Americas. They had cannons, they had rifles, they had swords. They make the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Army of the late 20th century seem mild and tame by comparison. Although perhaps mild and tame by comparison in terms of weaponry, Black American freedom movements have embodied the fighting spirit of the Maroons for centuries. From Marcus Garvey's UNIA to the African Blood Brotherhood in Tulsa, to the Deacons for Defense, the Black Panther Party, and even the Nation of Islam, the spirit of self-defense and self-sufficiency has endured within Black America for generations. Even today, many African Americans are taking a cue from their maroon predecessors by choosing to leave the United States in search of freedom, peace, and equality in the land of their ancestors. One such modern-day maroon is Gina Ifoe, an American expatriate now living in Ghana. My experience on the continent has been amazing. I actually cannot even remember life before connecting with Africa. You know, I feel like I belong. You know, the very first time I visited Ghana, it was, a, it was the most strangest sensation to me to be in a country that I had never been among people that I didn't know and feel so at home, you know, versus being in a place I was born and raised and always been made to feel like I didn't belong. Um, I feel like a fixture in the community. And being here has also restored my hope because it's given new life and new breath to my aspirations. I have gotten to the point in America, for instance, I felt that no matter what I do, I'm gonna be subjected to certain things. And I may never realize my fullest potential because of the systematic racism that's in place. Here on the continent, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, they are. Also endless is the spirit of freedom and self-determination inherited from our African ancestors that's demonstrated in today's youth. Even the I am not my ancestors moving itself, albeit misguided, demonstrates the same spirit of rebellion, 
self-determination and strength shown by black people throughout history. Perhaps with a more complete education about who our ancestors really were and what they really did, the mantra for the next generation will become, I am my ancestors. Sincerely, these hands. <laughs> I'm Clarity. I'll see you next time on The Breakdown.